The long run is a topic, in theory of the firm, that needs to be studied sort of on its own. Again, when we think about the idea of the long run, it's this idea of um, if there's no constraints on your planning or no constraints on production, then what could you do? That's a big assumption because there's very likely to be, uh, for, for all firms, there, there's likely to be some sort of constraint on the production. So you don't want to get into this thinking that, that some firms are in the long run and other firms aren't. It's better to think that every firm, when they're planning about what to change in the future, that's a long run topic or a long run way of thinking. But the current production phase where there's always going to be some constraint on you, that's more of a short run idea. Another thing that's valuable to think about is depending on the size of the firm, the short run could be much um, longer than, than it might be or the, the, it might last for a longer time than the short run would for another firm. So maybe a, a smaller firm that doesn't make a lot of profit, um, if you're looking at paying off you know, a contract, paying off a, you know, a lease contract or something like that, they may be stuck in that for a very long time because they don't have the amount of profit needed um, to pay that off and, and get out of it. Whereas a bigger firm with more you know, savings or something like that, um, you know, they could maybe pay a contract off uh, more quickly and then get into the long run of, you know, at, at a faster rate. Um, so that's that. When we think about the long run, all of the factors of production are variable. There's no idea of a fixed input in the long run. So really the sky is the limit. You could change whatever you wanted uh, and change it in a way that makes the most sense and is gonna result in the most efficient production. When we think about uh, this, it's easy to confuse this with the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns. And remember, that's a short-run concept. This states that as I increase production, costs are going to decrease and then increase. This is saying, well, how do I increase production and keep driving costs down? There's not that second idea of eventually it's starting to run out yet. What it means when we look at um, long-run production the idea is that if, if where I'm at now, if I have one hectare of land, uh, one worker and one uh, pickaxe, and what I'm trying to do is to dig trenches. Well, right now in this situation, probably the hectare of land is going to be the fixed input. It's probably gonna be rather difficult to change that quickly. I could hire more people easily, so that's a short run increase in production. I can go get more pickaxes easily, so that's an increase in production in the short run. But if I change all three of them at the same time, it's gonna be this one that's difficult to change. So changing it means that we're thinking in a long run way. Um, so let's say this is our current situation. And given this, I'm able to produce uh, one meter of trench, uh, trench dug an hour. So a long run way of thinking would be, well, what if I double everything? So I go to two hectares, two workers, and two pickaxes. The concept is really simple. All we think about is, okay, if I double everything, what's the ratio of return? Like how much does the, the, how much does the increase of production change by? So we talk very simply. If I double all of these and my output doubles to two meters per hour, well, this is what we call constant returns to scale. This is the big concept that we're looking at when we're talking about production. So if we have constant returns to scale, it means the ratio just doubled when I double the inputs. If we have increasing returns to scale, I double the inputs, but my amount of production more than doubles. It goes up to 2.5 meters. And if I double the inputs and my amount of production less than doubles, so the ratio decreases, then we have decreasing returns to scale. And the reason for this is something that we've said multiple times. This is just about efficiency. So here, in constant returns to scale, the efficiency doesn't really change, it just doubles. Um, here, because of whatever reason, we see an increase of efficiency, and here we see a decrease of efficiency. This concept is really limited to the idea of production, and to be honest, it never really goes beyond the theoretical. Um, I find it more useful to talk about the next concept that we'll see, which is the idea of economies of scale. 
And in economies of scale, we'll start to see how costs actually change, how they go up and down based on the production level that you choose. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.